Welcome down to the Malted Man Cave. I'm Keith. I'm Dave. Tonight, we're doing the Malted Man Cave Whiskey of the Year. All right, so tonight, as I said, we're gonna be doing our whiskey of the year. It's kind of more my whiskey of the year. Dave doesn't buy a lot of, he likes to come drink my whiskey. So I think- Mooch of the I year. Think, I think Dave's whiskey of the year would be a lot whatever. of great barrel proof or whatever I'm pouring. Whatever he's pouring. That's, <laughs> That's my whiskey of the week. As I mentioned earlier, when I was on Roy's live stream um, on Aqua Vitae, I had mentioned that Tam Do 15 is my whiskey of the year. My whiskey of the year, too. <laughs> yeah. 2019, baby. So when I kind of think about what I want to say is my whiskey of the year, I kind of factor in multiple things. Is it a whiskey that, you know, people can get their hands on? It's not so, you know, such a small outturn that like only 300 people can get a hold of a bottle. So I keep that in mind. I like to kind of keep it like an age statement. Um, I like to kind of see it like bang for your buck. It just kind of pretty much a really good whiskey that kind of took me by surprise. That is really good quality for the money. It's something that people can get their hands on and just something that kind of like. Yeah, it makes wow, sense. This is really good whiskey. So Tamdu 15 checks all the boxes for me. I did think about, I had a Glendronic 18, I think the 2019, which is actually a 23 to 24 year old whiskey. I was drinking the other night. I was like, maybe I should have gone with that, but it's not really fair because it's a 23, 24 year old. Tamdu 15. So a little bit about Tamdu. Do you know anything about Tamdu, buddy? It's got a nice name. <laughs> so Tamdu 15, they're they're known for, they used to use, I think, I don't think they use them anymore, but they had Saladin boxes, which is kind of a, it was an inventive way of, of malting barley. It looks like this little rectangular box and they had kind of mechanical arms that like stirred it up and then cooled the barley instead of the old school, you know, malting floors where people would go through by hand and kind of yeah. turn the barley and then they'd open the shutters and kind of yeah. keep it a certain temperature. Um, so they're kind of known for that. I don't, I don't think that they use them anymore. Mm -hmm. um, um, something else about Tamdu, they, I really, really enjoy them because they are using good quality sherry cask. I know you, <laughs> I don't know if you appreciate that so mm. much, but they use, I think it's Vesma um, in Hareth. It's a, it's a sherry bodega and they season their cast for two years, which I think is somewhat of a, it's not a very common practice. I think a lot of times it's like six months, maybe a year, but they actually do two years in quality Oloroso sherry casks. And another kind of interesting thing is that they use American oak and European oak. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You kind of get that really hardcore vanillins that you get from American oak. And then you kind of get the bitter, more resinous, dark chocolate notes that you get with the European oak. So that's another reason it kind of just, of all the things, of all the whiskeys that I've had, it kind of has this beautiful balance of American oak and European oak. And I don't think I've quite enjoyed it quite like I did with this one. Yeah, So sense. without further ado, let's get into some whiskey. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the Sherry Vineyards. I'm going to burn them all down. Burn them all. <laughs> You're a mess. Oh, one last fun fact. Um, I think starting in 2020, so this year, um, they're going to actually be re releasing older age statements than the actually state. So the Tamdu 15 might be 17 years old, kind of like what Glendronic did. So I think they've seen the success that Glendronic had with this like mystique about how it being older than it actually says. So I think that's starting this year and I think it's going to go through 2024, I believe. Um, if you know, leave it in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that's what I read in kind of a couple different magazines and whatnot. So yeah. Cheers. Without further ado, mm. let's get into some whiskey. What do you get on the nose, Dave? Wow. Man, I... This one shocked me with how good it was. I, I was not expecting that much. Okay. I think... Is that good? No, no, no. Good. Uh, for me, I, I get a lot of sweet flavors. Um, Starburst jelly beans is what I wrote. Some black licorice. Some I got some salt on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote saltwater taffy. Just a very sweet... Um, yeah, well, a light sweetness. I'll put it that way. 
Um, I also put some, I was trying to figure out what kind of wood, obviously the oak or whatever that is that I'm smelling. I put damp driftwood. It just reminded me yeah, of like I a- Yeah, There's definitely like an oaky, driftwoody. Yeah. And then uh, I wrote maple, uh, <clears throat> like a light maple syrup, maybe like a table syrup, not quite like a- It has this like sweet candy, just- syrupy note that's just so pleasant how about you man um so i put and it's not like it's very faint but like this faint milk chocolate covered pineapple milk chocolate covered and it's not strong i mean the fruit is really strong but it's like a small layer of like milk chocolate mm. so milk chocolate covered pineapple apples pears it's almost like like someone poured fruit cocktail syrup like the syrup in there I saw that note on the board from our our room where we figure out uh, notes, uh, where we draft our yeah. notes, and uh, it uh, it was hard for me to get that out of my mind mm -hmm. after after I read that because I know exactly what the canned syrup stuff. You smell it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slight coconut. I mean, if, mandarin oranges. This is just like a fruit. Just a fruit basket, a, a fruit cornucopia. basket in a bottle. A little bit of floral, slight, slight light raisins. Man, that's good stuff. I know I said apples before, but it's like an apple pie, like almost like apple pastries, like apple strudel. With a little cinnamon, mm -hmm. a little bit of, uh, yeah, and, then, and then it's like kind of like baked apple, apples, but then there's toaster strudel with the yes, and then with, the frosting with the frost that yep. frosting pack, that specific frosting. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> what about the palate, man? Mm, I I wrote juicy fruit. Uh, it just reminded me of a hard to describe fruit. Mm -hmm. I would put it that way. It's like a cross between it's a so red fruit and a cross between a tropical fruit. Yep. Like almost like juicy fruit bubble gum. Um, one thing for you people who love like bold, robust whiskeys, which I typically do. I love like the long row reds or just like a hardcore Laphroaig or Lagavulin. It definitely has its flavor, but it, it's subtle and it's kind of slow in how it builds. Like when I first mm -hmm. smelled it, when I first poured like the, my very first drain with this bottle, I was, I was kind of disappointed at first. It was like, it seemed like thin and light. It smelled, I smelled some good fruity stuff, but then over time it oozes in. And I know Ralphie talks about this a lot, about like the subtleties in whiskey. This is something you need to take your time with to truly appreciate it. If you just smell it, drink it, it's just going to be a good whiskey. But if you take your time with it and you put a dash of water and you let it like some time in the glass. Hello. It re <laughs> Hello. How are you? It, it gets it gets really special. What about the palate? Um, so that juicy fruit note, sh uh, sugar oh, cookies right, 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 is right, right. what <laughs> sugar cookies is what I wrote. Uh, just a uh, a breaded sugarness to it. Maple syrup like and waffles. almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Like a like a like a. I didn't put that in the note, but I'm getting that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put maple syrup and waffles. It's got to be with waffles, like a thick multi-grain, not multi-grain, but like it's got some meat to the waffle. Uh, salted caramel. <laughs> some meat to the waffle. Some meat to the waffle. Uh, salted caramel. And uh, I wrote, uh, man, it's got a very specific soft uh, salted pretzel. Yep. One of those uh, like Annie M's. Yeah, or, there's definitely a salinity to it for sure. So I pretty much get everything that I got on the nose. Um, chocolate covered pineapple, pears, apples, cherries. This time I didn't get this on the nose, like chocolate covered marshmallows, milk chocolate covered marshmallows. Coconut, light raisins, sour green apple this time, apple pie again, toaster strudels, and then the, the, the frosting. Mm. Uh, is there floral on the palate? 
maybe at the slightest bit of floral in a, in a good way. I think in my original notes, I put, uh, it reminded me a little bit of uh, fabric softener. Mm-hmm. That's a good app. The floralness that you get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the palate, there's this bitter resinous oak. And I know it maybe sounds bad, but it's, it actually prevents it from being too cloyingly sweet. Kind of this nice, pleasant, bitter Agreed. resinous oak. Um, like maybe driftwood, like you were talking about. Um, mild prunes, biscuits. I said gingerbread, but now I'm thinking it's more the trefoils, like I said. I put gingerbread down It's in my some notes. sort of biscuit. Yep. Barley sugar. Man. Mandarin oranges again. Like there's just pretty much any fruit you can think of, any orchard fruit. Or even any red fruit that you'd get, like, you know, from sherry notes. I mean, it's all in there. Mm -hmm. There's just so much. You really got to take your time with this. But good stuff. What about on the finish? Uh, so that that sugar cookie trefoil, the, the juicy fruits there, the, the, the saltiness. Um... <laughs> It's, it's, and some of that floral maybe even, yeah. um, on the way out, um, there's a, there's a nice warmth to it, a nice coating to it. I would say it's a medium finish. It's not, I don't think it has really uh, strong yeah. characteristics that stay a long time. I will say this. I think it stays for a decent amount. It's just more thin. Yeah, that the only possible negative I would say I, I wish it was a little bit more uh, viscous, o oily, yeah. and viscous. Yeah, um, that is like the only negative thing I can say about this whiskey. But I think it's medium, maybe even medium. Long. I feel like it's still there. It's just a thin. It's there, but it's kind of thin. It's yeah. not as pronounced. But, I mean, but all the yeah, exactly. It's not as pronounced. But the flavors are delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the trefoils, the biscuits and honey, slight light raisins, biscuits and honey, apples. This <laughs> marshmallows, the frosting, apple strudel. I'm telling you what, that balance, and I think you get more of the apple pie, apple strudel, the more vanilla kind of notes from the European oak, and then you get the bitter resinous and the dark chocolate and the chocolate and like, you know, all that stuff from the European oak. So, touche. I wish more distilleries would use both the European oak and American oak because apparently it works for this. Hey. It came out good. So, Multi Man Cave Whiskey of the Year, Tamdu 15. There was a couple other ones. And like I said, we've had better whiskeys this year. This is not like the best whiskey we've had this year. Just when you take everything into consideration, like the price, the value for money, um, just how it surprised me with how good it was, um, yeah. Tamdu 15. Yeah. So, Multi Man Cave Mark, what are you going to give this? Um, I really did enjoy this. Um, 90, Which is surprising for a sherry. I'm going to give it a 91. Darn. It's pretty darn good. For real? Yeah. yeah. Wow. You're going to get a higher score than I gave it. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. So I was going to give it a 90. Oh, maybe, nice. you're, maybe you're talking me into a 91. This is the best whiskey I've had all year. <laughs> <laughs> We're 20 days into what, it. Or what is your whiskey of the year this year, Dave? Lodge Craig Barrel Proof? No, I haven't had that yet this year. You um, haven't? I haven't. I mean, last, well, we're doing 2019. I know. I'm making a joke about this year saying it's the best whiskey. No, I really I do still can't believe you didn't like that uh, E.H. Taylor single barrel that much. Wow. Well, You're getting picky. No, You're getting spoiled. It's no Elijah Craig. You're getting spoiled in your old age. Uh, my my father-in-law liked the uh, Four Roses. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's it, that uh, single barrel. That's so good Why for not? the money. Yeah. Did bucks. you have some with it? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Did you like it? Yeah. I mean, we reviewed it like two years ago. Right, that was a while right. ago. No, fantastic stuff. Still good. So question of the night. Mm -hmm. We were talking and we want to talk a little bit about UFC. We Yeah, we both watched the Dude, fight. McGregor is back. Dude, that what he did with that like shoulder. I mean, have you ever seen anybody do that before? Well, of course, now they're showing all these clips of everyone that's ever done a shoulder strike ever in the MMA, yeah. saying like, "Oh, he didn't do it. Like, he's not the first one to do it." But the game plan Maybe, of doing it right at the beginning because he knew he was going to try right. and lean down and like that was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cerrone went to get in the clinch and 
McGregor was like, oh. no, nope. bam, bam, dude. He and just like uh, Cowboy was like, like what? Like, <laughs> what happened? Like, like what just? You didn't mean to do that? Let's okay. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. <laughs> we're we're good now, right? We're good. And then he's like, nope, no, nope. boom again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then just that leg confused. kick right to the face. He just looked confused by it. Like, yeah. uh, like this was not in the game plan. You like McGregor, right? Yeah, I like both yeah. of them. I, I liked Cowboy too. I, were I you, still were you rooting for McGregor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was yeah. Yeah, I just want, I want, I love McGregor talking and winning. And but anyways, glad that McGregor's back. I hope he fights Khabib. But who do you think? I don't think he's gonna fight Khabib. I think no. Tony Ferguson's going to knock Khabib out. You heard it here first. I also I picked the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> yeah, you did. And that did not age well. Um, I think my pick is going to win. Although the 49ers are so good. But anyways, who's the, who do you think is the best pound for pound, best UFC fighter of all time? Chuck the Iceman Liddell. No. <laughs> uh, um, so I was thinking, man... Uh, Mighty Mouse, uh, Drone Woodley, Tyrone Woodley. Mm -hmm. He's fantastic. Um, so small. <laughs> if you could blow him up big. I would say John Jones, but he cheated. Oh, well, he's a good fighter. He is. A, he, he's probably the greatest fighter, but he, uh, he, it's been proven that he did performance enhancing drugs. I know a lot of people do. Yeah. But a lot of people. If you get caught, yeah. sorry. You shouldn't. Speaking of performance enhancing drugs. If you are from our era, there is one name and one name alone. Anderson, the Spider Silva. He was so good. Just, you just. Until Weidman cracked his leg. <laughs> well, so I was just listening to, I guess with uh, Muay Thai and kickboxing, you have, you like, you you either hit your, your shins with bats mm -hmm. or you kick sandbags to get micro fractures to break your shins. And apparently on the kick before, yeah, you're supposed to break your shins in order to make them stronger. For I knew that you're supposed to like do that to like, so it, it's numb, so it doesn't hurt when you're kicking. So they will take bats, metal bats. That prevents you from shins. fully breaking it, it later on? Right, because it, it comes back, bone comes back denser and harder as it heals. So you keep micro fracturing to, so anyways. It's <laughs> crazy. The kick before Silva hits and Weidman brings his knee up and he hits him right here, right above the knee, like like hard spot Real to hard. kick. Yeah, it, which is exactly where Weidman needed to have it. And then the next one, so he probably cracked it on that one. And then, Ugh. Wah, 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 wah. oh man, so bad. Ugh. How about you, man? So, man, someone who I. I fell in love with UFC. I forget what his even first name was. Is it Horse? Who great? You know the Gracies who were like yeah, Horse Gracie. Is it? Was he the original? He was one of the brothers. He I, was like the. I think he was the biggest that, brother. Something with an H. I or think. the littlest brother. He did this like little. He jumped up in the air. And horse, horse, like Gracie. He. I literally saw a video back in the day, and this made me really like UFC. He, he jumped up too. and he like grabbed the guy's head. With his legs and then did a flip and like dragged him down. It was yeah. like the craziest move I've ever seen. Yeah. And he kind of made me fall in love with jujitsu and UFC. Um, mm. Pound for pound. Man. I, McGregor. It, what? I mean, I would have said McGregor until Khabib kicked his butt. <laughs> but I would have said McGregor before that. But Khabib, man, can you really pick against him right now? He's pound just for uh, round? He's just. There's Where just did nothing like him, man. He came from Kyrgyzstan or some <laughs> stan. Goodness gracious. I think I'm going to have to say Khabib. Khabib. Well, we'll find out. Khabib Ferguson. Yep. That's coming up. When is the fight? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Please like, subscribe, turn on the notifications. And as always, yeah. Scotch is king. Eh, no, no. Bourbon's, bourbon's best. Whatever.